So chapter three is the sine and cosine laws. The first thing I'm going to go over is the sine law, and then I'll go over the cosine law. So I'll just run through some examples. Um, the formula that you might know is sine A over A equals sine B over C, and it actually continues on to say sine C over C, and these uh, are all equivalent. The proof of how to do this is in your book. Um, I'm not sure it's that important, um, so I've chosen not to go over it. I do go over it a little bit in the notes, uh, the written notes. I'm not going to go over a video of it. So here we have this relationship between the angles and the sides. Notice that the angles are uh, labeled with uppercase letters and the sides in lowercase letters. The side with lower, lowercase letter is right opposite the angle. So for instance, if I labeled this triangle A, B, C, right across from angle A, I would have side little a, right across from angle B, I would have side little b, and right across from angle C down here, I would have side little c. So notice that the sides are, are um, labeled with lowercase letters and they're right across from the angle. That's just notation. Um, basically what this says is that if you take the sine of the angle divided by the side across from that angle, it's going to be equal to the ratio of the other two sides, or the angle and the sides. So this is how I do this. I start this off, I say, okay, well, sine of this angle down here, which is 63, divided by the, the side across from it, which is 18. And this is important because for the sine law to work, I must have a complete ratio. At least one ratio must be complete. So here I have an angle and a side, and I have both those values. This is going to be equal to sine of 58 over the side that's opposite that angle, which we're calling x, because I don't know it. That's what I'm trying to solve for. So next thing I do is a bit of calculator work. I, mean, uh, I need my calculator. I have to do sine 63 on calculator using degree mode. So I have 63, then I hit sine, so I get 0.891. So 0 0.8, oops, 0 0.891 divided by 18 is equal to sine of 58 which is 0.848 over x. This is how I solve these things. There's a, a couple ways to do them. I use cross multiplication. So I multiply the top by that bottom and this bottom by that top. So I end up getting 0 0.891 times x is 0.891x, which is equal to 0.848 times 18 which is 15.26. And then for the last step, we have to divide by the 0 0.891. That's just using algebra. 0 0.891 on both sides. So I take my value there, divided by my 0.891, and I end up with 17.13. So x is equal to 17.13. And that is the length of this side over here. That's what we found. So that's the first example, running through the sine law, um, how to set it up, and what you need. And that's how to solve for a side, a missing side. Next example I'm going to work through here is, oh, I'm missing an angle this time. Okay, so we set it up the same way. Notice that I don't have any labels here, and it doesn't really matter. All I need to know is that I have an angle up here, and I have a side that's right across from that angle. So I set that up. I say sine of 39 over 21 is equal to sine of theta, which I don't know, over 24, because the 24 is right across from theta. So the next thing I do is I solve these. Um, I'm going to solve this one a little bit differently this time. Because what I can do is divide these two values. I can take sine 39 and divide it by 21 to get a value of 0. 0.299. So let's say 0 0.03. So it's 0 0.03 is equal to sine theta over 24. Remember, I'm trying to solve for sine theta. So how do I get rid of the 24 in the bottom if it's being divided? I have to multiply it out. So I times by 24 on both sides. 24s cancel. The reason that I'm doing it this way is because it's kind of nice. I don't have to, I'm rounding on paper. But on my calculator, I'm not rounding at all. I'm keeping the value on my calculator, and I'm just going to work through the math. So I take that value and times it by 24. 
and then I have 0 0.719, which is equal to sine theta. And do you remember how to solve for angles? I have to do the opposite of sine, which is actually sine to the negative one, the inverse of sine. So I have to take sine to the negative one or the inverse of sine of both, uh, both sides. On the right side, I'll be left with just theta. On the left side, I'll have my angle. Notice again, I haven't done anything on my calculator, so I'm not rounding at all yet. I'm keeping it exactly um, the exact answer. And all I have to do is I have to take the inverse of sine. So I take inverse sine, and it comes up with 45.99. Now, that's fairly accurate. I would assume that if I rounded and worked out my rounding answer, it probably would have come out to about 46. And you could round this to 46 degrees as well, but it is nice to have an exact answer. Okay, my next example here is not using the sine law. Notice that I have an angle down here, but I do not know the side across from it. Notice that I have these two sides, but I also don't know the angles that are across from those two sides. So I'm going to have to use the cosine law, which is this. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. It's pretty long, but notice that it looks very similar to Pythagorean theorem, and that's kind of what it's related to. So let's see here. Notice that C is a side, and cos C, this big C, is the angle. So if you can kind of keep that in mind, then I'm, what, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to label this side C and this one little C. So I'm looking for X, and that's the angle that I have. The other two sides, A and B, don't really matter other than the fact that you, you need to know that they're not related to C in any way. They're not part of C. So let's fill in my missing information. This is the side C which I don't know. So we're going to call that x, and that's x squared equals. Does it matter what I call a or b? Not really. Let's call 13a squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 13 times 15 times the cos of my angle, which is 43. Notice the setup, too. I have two side lengths and an angle in between those two side lengths. That's a really big hint to use the cosine law. Let's work this out. Notice that everything on the right side I can work out in my calculator, and the left side is what I'm trying to find. Let's have this. x squared is equal to. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do my cos 43. There's kind of tricks that you can use um, for calculators that don't have good order of operations. So cos, 40, cos 43 times 15 times 13. and then times 2. And I think I'll, I'll leave it for there. Um, I got my 13 squared plus my 15 squared minus, just because I have to subtract off 285.233. And always round to about two decimal places. It's a good idea to be very accurate. Next thing I'm going to do is 13 squared, 169. We all know that 15 squared is 225. And that's going to subtract off my 285.23. Next step is just some arithmetic on my calculator. So I add on my 225 and I subtract off my 285.23, which leaves me with 108.77. And that's equal to x squared. How do I solve for x? Opposite of squaring, square root. So I square root both sides. So I have 108.77, I take the square root, and I'm left with 10.43. Great, so we've worked through the cosine law. Um, this is a basic example where you're solving for the side that's right across from the angle that you're looking for. Now here we have a final example. Of course, I'm not giving you the angle this time, so we're going to have to solve for the angle. But again, Keep in mind that my C and my C, here's my big C and my little C. And again, A and B don't really matter which order you put A or which one you put B. So here, I'm given C this time. I have 22 squared. That's the side right over here. 22 squared is equal to 27 squared or 20, 35. It doesn't matter which one you put first. Plus 35 squared minus 2 times 27 times 35 times
times the cos of my angle, which I don't know, so we're going to call that cos theta. Now, it's a good idea to think of this cos theta as just a variable, because we don't know what it is. So you could even call it like a or something, but I'm just going to put it in brackets just so you know it's on its own. Now, i got to work through this stuff, right? So 22 squared. Let's do that one more time. 22 squared, 484. which is equal to 27 squared, 729, plus 35 squared, which is 1225, minus, and then I have all this stuff here, the 2 times the 27, times my 35, which is 1890, and that's connected by multiplication. Don't make the mistake of having this adding or subtracting. It's, it's being multiplied by my cos theta. Just be aware of that. Because a lot of people say, oh, I can just add this to both sides or subtract this to both sides. No, nope, no, you can't do that because it's multiplication. What I can do, though, is I can um, subtract off my 729, and I can subtract off my 1225, because those are just being added and um, added to that side. So I subtract those both from this side here. Subtract off my 729, and subtract off my 1225. Yes, you're going to get a negative answer. So what do I have here? 484 minus 729 minus 1225. So I'm left with negative 1470. Notice I have no decimals, which is nice. And this is equal to negative 1890 times the cos of theta. Again, you don't have to put these brackets. I'm just showing them to show that it's a multiplication. Because I want you to know, how do I get rid of the negative 1890? Do I add it? Subtract it? No. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I have to divide by negative 1890 on both sides. So I have negative 1470 divided by 1890, which is negative which is equal to 0 0.7777. Now, I'm going to round on paper, but remember, I'm not going to round uh, on my calculator. I'm going to leave it. And that's equal to cos theta. How do I solve for just theta? Remember, I take cos to the negative 1 of both sides, or the inverse of cos of both sides. And it's really easy, because when I have that answer in my calculator, I can just hit inverse cos, because that's cos to the negative 1, and it gets me 38.94 degrees. So 38.94 degrees is equal to theta. So it's not too bad. It looks like a bit of work, but it's not too bad at all. You just have to remember to subtract these two values and then remember to divide by that value that's in front of cos theta, and you should be fine. So that ends off uh, working with the sine law and the cos law.